Hello, Bitcoiners. Wait a second. What is a Bitcoiner? Why are over 20,000 people in this crowd wearing free raw shirts, putting laser eyes on their profile pictures, and starting their own podcasts? And could it just be one big cult? Or is there a silent, much bigger social layer to Bitcoin that nobody is talking about? After going to over 30 Bitcoin meetups and conferences, and even speaking at a few of them, I thought I knew what it meant to be a Bitcoiner. But as I got deeper, I kept hearing the same word. In the right. first time in the history of the world, World, we have had a cult coupled with a financial interest. What do you make of it? And yeah, I sort of get it. Take all your money, buy Bitcoin, then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. But if Bitcoin truly does catch on as the future of money, which even central bankers are starting to admit is a possibility, then the thousands of people and counting in this crowd might end up with a lot of power in our world. So who are these people? What exactly do they value? Is it an exclusive club or can anyone from any walk of life find their place in the Bitcoin community. The first step was to leave my own Bitcoin bubble of Vancouver and travel all the way to New York City. You'd think with all these sweater vest finance bros, Bitcoin would be booming here. But turns out the Bitcoin community in New York actually has to go underground. So we're here in New York and we have two main goals. is to find someone on the Orange Pill app and form a genuine connection. All right, you type in Orange Pill app Get anyone yet? No. Still nothing? Nope. No one yet? No, but I don't get it. Do, are people working? <laughs> Nobody's responding. Wait! We got one! We got one! We got one! Okay, Daniel responded. He's like, hey, I'll be at PubKey tomorrow, most of the afternoon evening. Have you been there yet? Oh, guess yeah! what we're doing tomorrow? Can we meet tomorrow, 12.30 to 2? We're gonna try to meet up with Daniel tomorrow. All right, we are in New York City here. We're about to head to PubKey NYC, which is a Bitcoin themed bar. This whole bar is themed after Bitcoin, run by Bitcoiners, and we're gonna talk to them about what it means to be a Bitcoiner, especially in the city of New York. So we got PubKey right here. My name is Thomas. I'm one of the co-founders of PubKey NYC. I got into Bitcoin uh, like 2012, 2013. I'm a recovering lawyer. I was a swap and derivative lawyer at Capital Markets. Started reading about Bitcoin, got really fascinated by the cast of characters, the market, and decided that's what I wanted to do full time. The love of New York and um, how uh, badly, I would say New York has treated uh, Bitcoin in general and Bitcoiners in general. It would be easy if we just went to places that are nice to us, but you have to have a beachhead in some of the most hostile places, and that's what I think PubKey provides. Follow me. This is actually the first bar that accepted Bitcoin here in New York. They have the ads bar, <laughs> the infinity key, because the key to happiness is Bitcoin. They have the buy Bitcoin sign. And as you can see, how dope is this? Wait, 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 wait. Central bank digital currencies in Slate. What are the Bitcoiner values? I think I think some like self autonomy, self sovereignty. The sovereign individual is one of them. Wanting to be in more control of their personal property. That ranges, right? It easily goes to small government, but it also. Uh, definitely enhances some of the equity and inclusion aspects that progressives really like about this Bitcoin. It's a much more complicated conversation than this is a libertarian, conservatarian, carnivore, Christian, have a lot of babies like type thing. Like that might be one cohort, but it's it's definitely a global, multicultural, multi you know, faceted um, community. This is Dan the man. You were the first person to respond to me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, the story is I DM'd everybody on the Orange Pill app. Dan was the I first one. I was the first one. to respond and she texted me, hey, can we hang out while I'm in New York? <laughs> And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Bitcoin itself is kind of elusive, right? It's this digital currency and it already, people want something tangible, something physical. Um, and I think culture and community is so big for this space because we all believe in freedom and self-sovereignty and the future. And so where can you get together with all the people that believe in the same thing? You can get together here at PubKey and I think that's really great. Bitcoin culture is global. 
Bitcoin culture is kids in South Africa teaching people how to surf and earning Bitcoin. Bitcoin culture is someone in El Salvador maybe having a savings account for the first time in their lives and here in New York uh, getting together at a bar, you know, having a drink with friends that you might have known over the past few years. Just It's just hugs and, and, and joy. And just as I felt that I was starting to get closer to the truth of the Bitcoin community, life threw a curveball at us. Tropical Storm Debbie is also causing some travel problems. Tropical Storm Debbie is dumping historic amounts of rain. Yesterday was one of the worst days for air travel. 2,400 canceled flights. Today we're getting close. We're now nearing 1,600 canceled flights. Something happened during the filming of this documentary. Originally, we were set to fly to Chicago today. However, I just got this flight canceled. And guess what? The next flight to Chicago where I need to go for the rest of the shoot isn't until two days from now. I have been trying to use Orange Pill app to connect with the Bitcoiners as much as possible. We've met up with some here. Now, in our time of need, we're gonna see if Bitcoiners can come through and help a brother out uh, who is down thousands of dollars and lacking a place to stay here in New York City for the night. All right, so it's about an hour later and someone from the Orange Pill app, Bottle Huddle, has come to the rescue. She has a place for us to stay. I can't believe that. That is unbelievable. This is it right here. Okay, after a crazy few hours, we managed to find a Bitcoiner who graciously let us stay in her place here in New York City, which is unbelievable. The way that she found us and all of the coincidences around this story, I just, I can't even start to explain, but instead of me explaining it, I'm gonna let her explain it uh, and her Bitcoin story and how she has now become part of this crazy world of Bitcoiners. I was started watching a video, I stopped the video and I went to the the Orange Pill app, opened the app and joined it. And then all of a sudden I see this message come up of somebody that's stuck in New York and needs a place to stay. And I have an extra bedroom, so I just said, look, hey, you know, if you're really stuck and you need a place, please, you know, hit me up. They showed up, wonderful, wonderful couple, and just we had a great time chatting and talking Bitcoin. I came from the tech space, and I wanted to know like what's going on in the tech sector again these days, and so I started looking around El Salvador and Bitcoin stuff and things, just, just things that were gone. And then I found a little lady down there that had never been able to save any money because she sold products on the beach and said I've never been able to save money because she didn't have a you know basically a bank account you know, she's cash hand to mouth cash and they taught her about Bitcoin and said now I save money because I don't just spend it it's just not there and gone that's what changes the world I'm embarrassed to ask things because I'm so new I want to be a little smarter about it before I ask questions but they're like no 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 you know like you just started yesterday oh that's great come on you know, what do you want to know so eager to share and and, and bring you in and not, you know, not discount you for where you are in your journey. I've never seen that in any group, been in a lot of groups. You know, you can, <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide, it's coming, you know, and you're gonna have to face the music eventually. The fiat is a mess and you're gonna have to, you know, stand up and figure out how you're gonna deal with, with the life here. Four hours ago, we were complete strangers from different walks of life and generations apart. Yet in moments, we found a bond through this serendipitous experience and a shared curiosity over Bitcoin. In a world filled with skepticism, powerful dogmas, and forces pushing us towards survival mode, moments of spontaneous connection and generosity like this feel scarcer and scarcer. Bitcoiners have a motto, don't trust, verify. But when it comes to Bitcoin's human layer, in my time of need, the opposite felt true. Yeah, thank you again for being here. I'll miss you. Amazing. Next time, if you ever find yourself up in chilly old Canada, oh my goodness, let me know. Absolutely. And I can't even express this whole experience. It's just, it'll take me a few days to kind of really um, process it. So thank you very much. Oh, well, thanks so, for hosting us. Huh? Yeah. When you're in Bitcoin, these things just seem to, to happen all the time. Yeah. It's kind of magical. Our plane finally arrived a day later to take us to the next stop of our Bitcoiner tour. 
but little did I know I was going to be the one in the pilot seat. Alrighty, Hello. I'm here to go to the moon. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> On my journey looking to hear from inside the so-called Bitcoin cult, a veteran and pilot named Jeff reached out to me. Jeff served in the National Guard for over 18 years as a navigator, and after a few long-haul cockpit Bitcoin conversations with a coworker, decided to get deeper into Bitcoin than just buying and holding it. But before getting into that story, he surprised me with an offer I couldn't turn down. I'm here with Jeff, a friend I've now met on the Orange Pill app, and today uh, he's teaching me how to fly. Yeah, it's an intro flight. Let's go. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so not gonna lie, that smile didn't last very long, and I kind of started to panic. Remember the first time you drove a car? Flying a plane is like that, but imagine 10 times as many checks and 100 times as many buttons and dials. And if you miss any one of them, you don't just end up in a ditch, you end up exploding in a field or wherever those missing Boeing flights went. Look, if you can handle Bitcoin's volatility, you can handle your first flight, okay? Bitcoin sets you up for all things in life. I didn't think I was gonna fly a plane today, but uh, this is what happens when you meet Bitcoiners, you do some crazy things, so. And then <laughs> full rich. Okay. Oh, this is so wild. Thank you so much for the camera. It's so real. You ready? Ready to go. All right. Say something to the camera. Final, final wish. <laughs> Bitcoin to the moon. Let's go. Follow me. Right pedal. Pull hard. Okay, so everybody has their own definition of what makes a Bitcoiner, but there is one rule that we all follow. Not your keys, not your coins. If you're looking to get into Bitcoin without giving your keys away to some random exchange or God forbid BlackRock, check out today's video sponsor, Bitcoin Well. Bitcoin Well lets you buy and sell Bitcoin from any bank in the US or Canada straight into a Bitcoin address that you own and vice versa. And if you live in Canada, you can even use any of the over 100 Bitcoin ATMs that Bitcoin Well has to buy Bitcoin privately and directly with cash and the only ID you need is an email address. I've been using Bitcoin Well for the last year and a half to buy all my Bitcoin, and I don't think I am ever gonna touch another exchange again. So if you wanna join me, check out the link in the description or up here for more information, and I'll see you in the rest of the video. So when I was first introduced to Bitcoin, I knew what Bitcoin, I, I heard about it. I didn't understand, I didn't know anything about it. But it wasn't until this particular flight from Anchorage to Chicago that I had a first officer start to explain what Bitcoin is, the fixed supply, the decentralization, how the mining works. It took me about four months of digging into it to start to get an idea of what it was. And it, it basically turned all my education upside down. A Bitcoiner is someone who believes in the power of Bitcoin in the technology and what it can do for the human race. They're looking at improving the world through this technology. Jeff's experience with Bitcoin was very similar to mine in a lot of ways. First, there's the rabbit hole of YouTube videos or that friend who won't shut up about it. Then there's buying it and feeling great amounts of joy or pain, depending on where the market goes. And then after a while, there's that longing sense of where do I fit into all of this? I would hope that our world can slowly work towards more peaceful resolutions. If you look at what's happening in Ukraine right now, if there was a more of a Bitcoin standard, I don't think the, the war would have broken out. There's too much money to be made in, in, through the war machine. And for my kids, I'd like to see a more peaceful way of resolving conflicts between countries. It's always gonna happen. So Bitcoin is kind of a new mission. And then the main thing about what happens in the military, and I think you see this in a lot of the industries that are funded by the government, is that the money's just printed and it goes into the military industrial complex for these endless wars. We saw that for the last 20 years. So I think Bitcoin veterans is a way to take that, that energy that a lot of military vets have and redirect it to something that's very productive, it's positive, it brings new hope. Hopefully in the future, by focusing on this, that we will make wars less attainable. What advice would you give to somebody starting their Bitcoin journey? You just have to get started. You have to take that first step forward, get a wallet, start saving something, just do something, read a book, whatever it might be. 
open your eyes up to uh, what's going around us. Understand that when Congress passes a law and they want to give out free education, it has consequences. Nothing is free in life. Don't get rug pulled by, by the government. But protect yourself. Use Bitcoin as a tool. Feeling like Tom Cruise today. <laughs> it's a good one. You gotta have her shirts off. And... Yeah, uh, I'm not. Th I'm not there yet. Bitcoin is the Bitcoiners. There is no Bitcoin without the Bitcoiners. It's just a white paper. As we know, there's a thousand of uh, shit coins, and all have their own white paper. And you know, most of them they die because people don't adopt those technology or those networks. So. Strengthening the social layer of Bitcoin, it is strengthening the Bitcoin itself. In my mind, the orange pill is that little seed you plant in somebody's brain. You're planting a thought in somebody's mind somewhere in their consciousness. Maybe it's a few layers down. If you water it properly, it will grow into some like weighty convictions. And what's fun about Orange Pill App is that I built it for kind of Bitcoin maxi to find each other. But it turns out some people have found a shortcut. There are newbies download the app. They know there are Bitcoin maxi in the app. And then they go and ask questions. Instead of watching like I did, or you did, like a thousand hours of Bitcoin, they go and use Orange Club as an educational platform. I actually have a very simple answer to the question, what is a Bitcoiner? Which for me, it's somebody that cares more about FGU than NGU, FGU being freedom go up, NGU being number go up. In 2025, there are all these amazing avenues for Bitcoiners to connect with one another, but it wasn't always like this. Maybe in order to understand what exactly it meant to be a Bitcoiner, I needed to ask some people who were there from the very beginning, before Trump, Sailor, conferences, hell, before the Bitcoin price had even hit $10. Back in 2011, the excitement was more around simpler things around Bitcoin. The fact that you could send money from one person to another without having an intermediary, without having a bank in the middle. My first intro to Bitcoin was mining Bitcoin in my basement with a bunch of GPUs. Most of the narrative around it back then was like, this is a really good way to pay for things. It was being pushed as like a competitor to like Visa and MasterCard, not the dollar. There wasn't a lot of talk about hard money back then, and there wasn't this feeling of a shared mission yet. I remember IRC, Bitcoin Talk, and Reddit were the three big places that I would have conversations with Bitcoiners back in 2011. There was a lot of early Bitcoiners that you could put into three camps. There was the Austrian economic driven people who were more aware of what Bitcoin could potentially become as a store of value. And then you had another group of people who were like cypherpunks and early technology adopters. Then you had the entrepreneurial driven money makers who were kind of just like early to making apps, early to buying domain names, early to whatever. Definitely that Bitcoin represents this human desire to attain something that is meaningful and is bigger than you. For that reason, it wins in, in the free market of Bitcoin versus crypto versus gold versus bonds versus fiat, because it is the best. I would say that a Bitcoiner is somebody who shares a belief system and that belief system is centered around the idea that allowing other people to print the money that we use is not a system that we need to continue with. We're taking back the value that we create with our time. And that brings us back to today. Two months after we filmed, Donald Trump made a pit stop to PubKey. All right, we're done. Perfect. The we first go. transaction by a president on the Bitcoin protocol. History. Ooh. Bitcoin didn't get this level of relevancy by just being a well-written piece of code. It got here because of the conviction of its adopters. And now the spotlight is beginning to move from the money itself to the people behind its movement. Nailing down what is a Bitcoiner wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be. And if it is a cult, it's the most confusingly open-minded one I've come across. So just to make sure I wasn't missing anything, I traveled back to Vancouver for one last Bitcoin cult meeting or block party to ask that question to as many of these self-identifying Bitcoiners as I could. You've been into Bitcoin for a while, but this is the first time you've hung out with 
all of us. What do you what do you think of these uh, these Bitcoiners in the community? Oh, I'm loving it. I'm having a great time so far. It's been like the friendliest, most engaging. Like everyone seems to have time to talk to you if you have a question. No questions too dumb. When I first got into it, it meant kind of like a hedge against the current state of affairs and the way the world's going financially and economically. It's probably evolving to be more of, um, I don't know if that sounds corny, but it's uh, it entices me to make good decisions about saving because I, I believe that there is a better future to look forward to. Um, to be a Bitcoiner for me means to live with hope, to live with vision, to live with the purpose that I'm working on something that will contribute to the better for the entire humanity and that's very rewarding. I would say like being a Bitcoiner is really understanding the, t the value of time. Being against systemic theft through inflation, uh, you are pro-freedom, generally, you know, trying to live a healthy life. This is a currency that you cannot touch. So then you need to touch the community that has been touched by it and be able to be here with each of us who have such a different journey and such a different story, but all of us can, can coincide in this one point, which is a hard money preference. I think being a Bitcoiner means that you believe in like sovereignty for people and how they spend and live, essentially. You want to own your money, right? You don't want to be rug pulled. Um, and you believe in technology that actually gives people their sovereignty from data privacy to deciding who they want to interact with. It means a lot of different things to different people. Um, for me personally, it has shifted my mentality to realize that a few simple things can help you have a much easier life. Number one, to create value for others. Number two, to spend less than you earn. And number three, to save in a money that nobody else can print. Funny enough, with all those little things, you make a lot of great connections and uh, and a whole new group of people can enrich your life. No one's here talking about Lambos or like getting rich. Everyone here is focused on making the world a better place, not just like, you know, being selfish and getting rich and hoarding money and like all the stuff that you usually get at other you know, in other like financial conferences. To be a Bitcoiner is to have a low time preference and put freedom above everything else. To approach life in a way that is keeping an open mind about everything and to truly respect people's freedoms and the way they choose to live their lives. What's going on here? Let's get a tattoo and you know what? Running, Running Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I felt was it was oh necessary. God. I couldn't pay for what I just did. <laughs> what does it mean to be a Bitcoiner? What does it mean to be a Bitcoiner? I think being a Bitcoiner means being authentic and being genuine, showing up in the world for who you are, and not someone else, and that's what I believe. Nobody's one lived experience of Bitcoin is going to be the same. But I can say in the 30 years I've been on this planet, nothing has filled me with more optimism, wisdom, and hope for the future than the people I've met on my Bitcoin journey. If you've been curious about Bitcoin but haven't been ready to take that next step, the best thing I recommend is to just go meet another Bitcoiner. And when you're ready, you can be a part of our crazy cult too.